This video is about how to loop over multiple objects at once using R. Last time we learned about looping by index and the fact that it allows us to store the results of the calculations that we do inside of a loop. One of the other advantages of looping by index is that it can allow us to loop over multiple objects simultaneously. And to look at this, we'll look at the example of our mass calculation exercise where we use different values of this coefficient and this exponent in different circumstances. And so let's go ahead and add a couple of additional vectors where we want to store that information. And so we'll have this uh, coefficient here. We'll call that B0. And we'll create a vector that has the appropriate B0 values in it. And so we'll have 2.65, but also 1.28 and 3.29. And then we'll use B1 for this exponent and in that vector we'll keep our 0.9 that we started with and then we'll also add 1.1 and 1.2 and so now we'll use our loop to do this calculation with different values of b0 and b1 and of course we don't really need a loop here uh, we're just using this because it's uh, the simplest way uh, that I can think of to explain how loops work, uh, we could just rely on, on vector math if we wanted to. But for doing these things in the loop, we now need to get our value of b0, b0, and put it here. And so we can do that by saying b0, square brackets, in the ith position. Right, because on the first trip through the loop, we want the first volume, but also the first value of B0 and the first value of B1. And so over here, instead of 0 0.9, we can have B1 and again in the ith position. And so what this will do is the first time through the loop, it will create this vector from one to three, assign the first value one to I, it will then get the first value out of B0 and put it here, the first value out of volumes and put it here, and the first value out of B1 and put it here and do the calculation. The next trip through the loop, I will be two, so it will get the second value for B0, volumes, and B1 and do this calculation and store it in the second position in masses. And then the third time through the loop, it'll get the third value from B0 from volumes and from B1 do this calculation and store it in masses. And so if we run this code and look in masses, we'll see that we now have the same calculation for that first volume because it used the original parameters, uh, but different values for the other two uh, volumes because it used a different set of parameters. And again, we don't need a for loop in this context, but there are absolutely situations where we want to loop over two objects simultaneously and combine those results. And this is one way to do that, which is looping by index, which means that we can then get the first item out of each of the two objects that we wanted out of, the second item out of each of the two objects that we need to get things out of and so on. So that's how we loop over multiple objects simultaneously. We loop by index, which allows us to then access the objects at that index, no matter how many objects we have. Whereas when looping by values, we'd only be able to access those values in the one object that we were looping over. Check in, uh, check, check. <clears throat>
Uh, there are also some folks over at my house doing work today. And uh, when I talked to him this morning, I did not have my hair up. Uh, and I just popped out to say something to him. And I got a very interesting and confused look, followed by an awkward pause before answering my question. And uh, so the hair is influencing the world far and wide today. <laughs> Perhaps I should not have chugged a bunch of soda right before starting this lecture. I'm just saying. 